For the past four days, Facebook has been taken to the woodshed by critics, the stock market, and regulators after it was reported that the data science firm Cambridge Analytica obtained the data of 50 million Facebook users. Until Wednesday, Mark Zuckerberg had stayed silent. On Wednesday afternoon, though, he addressed the problem in a personal Facebook post and laid out some of the solutions he will introduce. He then gave an interview to Wired in which he discussed the recent crisis, the mistakes Facebook made, and different models for how the company could be regulated. He also discussed the possibility that another, Russian, shoe could drop. Here is a transcript of that conversation. Nicholas Thompson, you learned about the Cambridge Analytica breach in late 2015, and you got them to sign a legal document saying the Facebook data they had misappropriated had been deleted. But in the two years since, there were all kinds of stories in the press that could have made one doubt and mistrust them. Why didn't you dig deeper to see if they had misused Facebook data? Mark Zuckerberg, so in 2015, when we heard from journalists at The Guardian that Alexander Kogan seemed to have shared data with Cambridge Analytica and a few other parties, the immediate actions that we took were to ban Kogan's app and to demand a legal certification from Kogan and all the other folks who he shared it with. We got those certifications, and Cambridge Analytica had actually told us that they actually hadn't received raw Facebook data at all. It was some kind of derivative data, but they had deleted it and weren't making any use of it. In retrospect, though, I think that what you're pointing out here is one of the biggest mistakes that we made. And that's why the first action that we now need to go take is to not just rely on certifications that we've gotten from developers, but we actually need to go and do a full investigation of every single app that was operating before we had the more restrictive platform policies that had access to a lot of data, and for any app that has any suspicious activity, we are going to go in and do a full forensic audit and any developer who won't sign up for that, we're going to kick off the platform. So, yes, I think the short answer to this is that's the step that I think we should have done for Cambridge Analytica, and we are now going to go do it for every developer who is on the platform who had access to a large amount of data before we locked things down in 2014, and t okay, great. I did write a piece this week saying I thought that was the main mistake Facebook made. MZ, the good news here is that the big actions that we needed to take to prevent this from happening today we took three or four years ago. But had we taken them five or six years ago, we wouldn't be here right now. So I do think early on on the platform we had this very idealistic vision around how data portability would allow all these different new experiences, and I think the feedback that we've gotten from our community and from the world is that privacy and having the data locked down is more important to people than maybe making it easier to bring more data and have different kinds of experiences. And I think if we'd internalized that sooner and had made these changes that we made in 2014 and, say, 2012 or 2010 then I also think we could have avoided a lot of harm. NT, and that's a super interesting philosophical change because what interests me the most about this story is that there are hard trade-offs in everything. The critique of Facebook two weeks ago was that you need to be more open with your data, and now it's that certain data needs to be closed off. You can encrypt data more, but if you encrypt data more it makes it less useful. So tell me the other philosophical changes that have been going through your mind during the past 72 hours as you've been digging into this. MZ, well that's the big one, but I think that that's been decided pretty clearly at this point. I think the feedback that we've gotten from people, not only in this episode but for years, is that people value having less access to their data above having the ability to more easily bring social experiences with their friends' data to other places. And I don't know, I mean, part of that might be philosophical, it may just be in practice what developers are able to build over the platform, and the practical value exchange, that's certainly been a big one. And I agree. I think at the heart of a lot of these issues we face are trade-offs between real values that people care about. You know, when you think about issues like fake news or hate speech, right, it's a trade-off between free speech and free expression and safety and having an informed community. These are all the challenging situations that I think we are working to try to navigate as best we can. NT, so is it safe to assume that, as you went through the process over the past few days, you've been talking about the trade-offs, looking at a wide range of solutions, and you picked four or five of them that are really good, that are solid, that few people are going to dispute. But that there's a whole other suite of changes that are more complicated that we may hear about from you in the next few weeks. MZ, there are definitely other things that we're thinking about that are longer term. But there's also a lot of nuance on this, right? 
So there are probably 15 changes that we are making to the platform to further restrict data, and I didn't list them all, because a lot of them are kind of nuanced and hard to explain, so I kind of tried to paint in broad strokes what the issues are, which were first, going forward, making sure developers can't get access to this kind of data. The good news there is that the most important changes there had been made in 2014. There are still several other things that, upon examination, it made sense to do now. And then the other is just that we want to